Welcome back to Music and Wood. Today, we're going to talk about the first five things that you need to do with your new planer. Congratulations on purchasing a planer. You now have an awesome tool that you'll be able to use for many projects. You can now go get rough wood, bring that back to your shop, and plane that down to the thickness that you need for your project. You can also use scrap wood that you have Thickness plane it to a different size that might suit a different project better. But before you get started planing wood, there are a few things you need to do first to maximize the usage and potential of your new planer. First, read the manual. That is the most important step you can do with any tool, especially your planer. It's an awesome tool, but to know how to properly use it and care for it, you've got to read the manual. It also will tell you how to feed your work pieces through your thickness planer and also the limitations on the size and thickness of the material that you can plane. Once you've read the manual, you'll be that much more informed on how your planer works. Number two, clean your new planer. Go ahead and get some 91% isopropyl alcohol and use that to remove any debris or packing grease or anything like that from the factory from the bed on your planer. You'll want to remove that to clean it up and then use a nice tool wax to get the surface nice and smooth and very slick. You want the work pieces to just glide across the surface of your planer. Number three, make a cart. A planer is a heavy tool. It would be a little bit unwieldy to keep moving it around by hand. I think this planer says it weighs about 100 pounds. I certainly don't want to lift that up all the time. I'm spending my energy lifting the wood to work on that I get from the lumberyard. So instead, I made a cart. This doesn't have to be a fancy cart. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can definitely buy a cart if you'd like, but I had some scrap wood lying around, which was perfect for the project. So I made a cart out of some scrap two by fours and some scrap plywood, and I even had some casters lying around from another project that I didn't need anymore and put them onto the cart. So now it very easily wheels around. That way I'm not hurting my back. I'm not exerting myself on moving my tools and I can think about the cuts that I'll be making on the wood. Number four, check the depth stop and thickness gauge and make sure that they're set correctly. Chances are they're perfect from the factory and require no adjustments. But it's easy enough to take a scrap piece of wood and run it through and make sure that everything's adjusted correctly. And finally, number five, make a sled. You can make a sled out of some MDF or some laminate, something that's going to be hard and rigid and also keep its shape over time. And the sled will be a nice long piece of board with a little lip at the back. Make sure that you don't have any hardware that could possibly come up and get hit by the blades. You don't want to ding a blade. But what this sled will allow us to do is run a slightly twisted piece of wood through. And we can then shim an uneven portion of that wood to where we can then get a steady solid piece of wood on our sled being pushed through. And we can basically joint one side which then we can flip off and run the jointed or flattened side straight through on just the bed of our planer to remove a twist from a board. Now you know how to use your planer because you read the manual. You cleaned your planer so wood will glide very smoothly across the surface. You've got a cart to keep it mobile. You've double checked your depth stop and your thickness gauge with a scrap piece of wood and you now have a sled to remove the twist from boards. You're all set on your planer and ready to go and further your woodworking enjoyment and abilities. I'll see you next time on Music and Wood.